Welcome back to Simright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to sew this empire gown, as you can see right here. So I'll be teaching you the tips and tricks to joining this empire gown, as you can see right here. Then I'll also teach you how to sew this beautiful sleeve. So if this is what you want to learn, please stay tuned to the end of this tutorial. Thank so you. So to start off this tutorial, you will be needing your front and back basic bodies pattern. So what I have here is my front basic bodies and this is the back basic bodies. So once you've gotten your pattern, we will start working on the front pattern first. So the first thing we are going to do for the front pattern we are going to first of all determine the neck depth so what i have here is my natural neckline so but the real neckline we are working with now is going to be four by four okay four inches on the width then coming over since it's a v neckline for the front i'll just come from these three inches i will take my cleave measurement so i will work with my cleave measurements at three and a half so from here I, I went in by three and a half so if you want to make it deeper you can go ahead and take the measurement of what you have on your neckline so I'll just go in so I want to also cross check my bust point to under bust this is my bust point to my under bust point is three and a half. I just want to see from here the three and a half pointing to okay. So you I will just advise on your neckline, just take the measurement of where you want this to be. So let me go by four and a half. I think four and a half will give us a better neckline. So from here, instead of three and a half, I went down by four and a half. So once you have done that, just simply go ahead and connect your V neckline. So um, I just want to, I don't want it to be a sharp, a sharp V. So I will just use the curvy part of my ruler to form the V. So I think what we have here is better. It, be, it, it better reflects what we are working with. So the next thing I will do is to contour my under bust line. So on the under bust line, I'm going to take my under bust measurement, divide by four from the center front. So whatever your under bust measurement is, divide by four. For me, I have 8.75 and I have one and a half left. So this one and a half left, I'm going to put 0 0.25 for a quarter and the remaining one and a quarter or 1.25, I'll add it up there. So I'll go ahead and do this. I'm trying to create the, I'm creating the bust accommodation. So this is the under bust line, under bust point line. And that is exactly where we are working with. So whatever we have right here on this point, just go go ahead and do this keep your ruler straight this way do the same right here this way okay so at the end of the day we are going to replace what we have from here to here by the side because i've already replaced my one inch that the original that i have before this contour line was one and a half so that one and a half here is where i replaced it this is my dad replacement but because i've contoured because i want to join this uh, and this together so i have to keep it straight to be able to join it together but you understand what i'm doing at the end of the day so what we are going to replace now will be from here to here so i'll take the measurement of what i have one inch so that one inch i'm going to add it here so let me just make the mark here but that will be at the end of cutting off the upper part. Then we'll now add the one inch and replace. So you see what I'm going to do there. So this is how this is going. Now we have cut out. So what we have right here is what we are going to take off. We are going to cut it off. 
So the next thing I'll do is to create the empire design. So to create the empire design, I'll be using sitting my ruler this way. I'll have to make sure it touches the point of my neckline and my under bust. Then I'll connect. Can you see? So now we are done. Like I said, the dress is just a very easy one. So we are done with the front. Next is to cut out this dart and replace it. Replace this one because we've replaced this already. So to make you understand what I'm talking about, from this center front, my waist divide by four. From here, my waist will divide by four is nine and a half. So you can see the nine and a half. The whole of this dart is two and a half. And that is what I just marked here. I believe you understand it now. So, like I said, this replacement, that replacement is only within here, within this line and this line. So, that's why I don't want to connect it till we are done. So, once we are done, I'll just simply mark what I have here and connect. Or, what you can do is this. From here, I have one inch. So, you can just come in here and do what? And add one inch. So... If I've added one inch, I'll just follow this line. Okay, so that is the replacement of this that's as simple as that. So now we are going to go over to the back. So for the back, I'll extend this line. This line is my under bust line because the uh, uh, other color, light green color, I will, it will have to go to the back this way. So the first thing I'll do is to contour my back and replace what I have because I will have a zipper at, the, at that point. From the center back, I'll go in by 0.75. Once I go in by 0.75, I'll connect to the neckline. So I'll remove what I have here. So back is that less. So since it's that less, simply place your tape and measure your waist divide by 4. Your bust divide by four. Then you now connect. So you know you have your full back bodies. So once you have connected, the next thing we want to do is to create is to also recreate my neckline. So for the back neckline remains four inches, and I'll come down by one more inch. So once I come down by one more inch, I'll place my pattern ruler to connect the neckline. So that is the alteration I'm making. So the next alteration we'll be making is, you know that what I took here is my back length. Can you see? My back length here is 15 inches. My front length was 17 inches because of the bust that. So my under bust falls at 14, okay? So, but at the back, because we have a two inches that, so all you are going to do is just step up because that uh, curve we have in the front is at 17, which is the waistline. And I started curving from 14, which is the under bust. So if you look at 17, I'm counting one, two, three. That is for the front. So since the back length is 15, still count one, two, three. That is where we'll start to curve. So the curving will start at 12 inches. So it will be able to suit into, uh, two of them will match up at back and front. So now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to recreate my curve. So you can bring it to the chest line. What I mean by bringing it to the chest line is you can go ahead and recreate your curve the way you wish. So this particular curve, I'm going to take it this way. You can see how I placed it. Can you see that? So all I have here is going to be the sea green color. While what I have here will be the black color. Okay. So if you don't want to connect to the center back, you can also place your pattern ruler and come down a little bit. That is if you don't want it to be too up like that, you can still go 
this way you can do this and connect okay so maybe we'll be going with what we have right here so i'll just take away what i have right here so i'll quickly cut out this pattern so in cutting out this pattern there's not no too much cutting here but to just go to the side and cut cut on the armhole then you go over to the contour So now for this part, since we are working with this, I'll just go with this, okay? We'll just go with this. So that is what I'm going to use to cut. So this is my center back and this is the center back. So we are going to join these two together. Now for the front, I'll go in to the neckline and cut. I'll come in to the center front. So let me just cut out the So for here, I will cut through the replaced parts. Then I will continue here to here my boss that then I will take it to my arm hole then to the shoulder seam line so here i'll just quickly cut out the darts i'm cutting out the bust darts up to that point so i'll take off the darts then i'll be able to Close my bust that. So I'll apply my adhesive for my bust that and close it up. Okay, so I'll close it up. Then I'll separate the up from here. And then go in from here. So you are going to see why I have to replace the down part. So I'm going in from here. So here is my center. Center. Sorry, this is the center front. So I'll join this and this together now. So I'm taping them together right away. All right, so that is that. So like this, we have it as a full bodice right now. Okay, so by the time we stitch this to this and close up this, by the time we sew this, everything returns to back to normal. So from here to here, you need to make sure to make sure you have your waist circumf uh, circumference divide by so i have it exactly at nine and a half so that's how to go about it so i just want to be sure what i have from here from here now from this line i want to be sure is what i have on that line so from here when we close it that i have 6.25 so from here, you should also have 6.25. So I was supposed to add this up together. I'm sorry about that. 
So this is how you know whether there will be a shortage. So there is actually a shortage here. So I'm going to add up my pepper. I'm very sorry about that. We are supposed to add up our pepper and continue this boss point. So I'll just go ahead and apply my adhesive. So I'll just join it up or else you have a shortage. So please try and do what I'm doing right here now. So I'll have this and let this start from this point. Okay, so it has to match up this way and start from this point. So next is to connect it. We are supposed to connect everything from here to here. That is what we are supposed to do. So please try and do this. So once I've connected it, I'm going to do what? Cut it off. Can you see that? So that's just the replacement. So we are done and we want to start up cutting. So I'm going to cut the this color first. Okay, so I'm cutting two times of what I have here. Both lining and fabric. Then this one, I'll place it on food when we get to the time. So I will now cut the upper piece pattern. And you can see I added 0 0.5 inch. So this is how you are going to add the 0 0.5 inch till it terminates at this point. So it's not going to get to the bust point. So I added 0 0.5 and one and half for my side seam, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So here I have both lining and fabric. I'm using a, a, this color. So if you can get same color of lining, just go ahead and use the same color for all of them. So I have four pieces here. For the back, one inch seam allowance, 0 0.5 on the neckline, this way, one and a half on the side, and I still have four pieces of it right here. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to go ahead to take off the pattern and sew this dart. So I'm going to sew this dart this way, okay? So there is a, a method of sewing this dart. So once you match it up together, match it up together, I'm going to start from below. I'm going to start from the end of it. And I'm as I'm going sewing, I'm not stopping here. I'll just round it up around here. If not, you it will be pointy at this point. So I will do that and show you how it looks like. So I'm done sewing both lining and fabric. So you can see the cup is there. So this is how it's going to look like. So by the time we put the other one and sew it, it gives us that effect. So the sewing of this, like I said, is a special kind of sewing. I'm zooming my camera for you to see. So you have to place it this way and start from here. So here definitely will be shorter. No problem about that. So just make sure you place the dart equally, okay? As you are sewing at 0 0.5 inch, you are going to form a dart. A curved dart this way or else you will have a, a pointy part when you turn it this way it will be pointy okay so the way it is now you can see if I give it a good press it will give you the bust effect so the next thing we want to do now we want to start sewing lining the neckline so I bring the lining that matches it and I will match it this way and I'm going to sew 0 0.5 inch top stitch. I'll do the same 0 0.5 and top stitch. So let me do that. So I've sewn and I've top stitched. But one thing you need to do is to leave half an inch here. Because you are going to sew the black part of the dress here. And use this to turn it. So please, when you are sewing the neckline, leave about half an inch or one inch. Okay. So I will set it aside. I left half an inch as well. So I will keep the upper part. Then we'll move over to the back. So for the back, I will only go ahead and sew my neckline. 
So I'm sewing my neckline as usual. Then I'll also top stitch. So this is it. I'll just lay my lining right side to right side. So I'll only sew the neckline and top stitch. So that is all I'm going to do now. So, so right now I've finished with my neckline and I top stitched. So I'm going to give it a good press right now. So the fabric I'm working with for this sea green part is one yard and I'm using thick crepe for it. Okay, so you can use cotton, you can use a uh, crepe. At least these are the fabric I'm sure will give you this um, uh, fine effect. So now we'll jump over to the down part. I want to start up the down part of this tutorial. So the fabric I'm working with right here is also crepe. So it's a thick crepe, as you can see. And I'm using one yard, one yard of it. So this one yard of it, the yardage is on this line. Can you see? And it's by 60 this way. So what I did was the one yard, I have to place it on fold like this. You can see that on fold like this. This is the by 60 part. So when I fold it from here now, I have here on fold to here. That will be 30 to give me 30 on this length and 36 on this length. So the next I will do is to pick up this part I folded of the one yard and I will match it up this way to the 36 that is a yard part so this one yard part right now that I folded I will leave one inch zipper allowance but one thing is that we are going to have an overlap as it is right there on the video if you look at the back of that dress there is an overlap at the down part so because we are we have an overlap I'm going to push this to two inches so we'll be able to have an adequate overlap. I've given the two inches allowance, okay, because we are going to have an overlap on this skirt. So the first thing we are going to do now, after giving that two inches from beginning to the end, we are going to make our border. So this border line is going to serve as your waist line. So just place your waist uh, line. My waist is 17, so I'll just place my tape there at my waist line. So after my waist line, I'm going to mark my hip line. So my hip is 29, so I'll just mark my hip line. The next I'll mark is my knee line. So my knee line is 41. I'll count 1, 2, 3, 4 up. Then I will use the rest of what I have here, okay, to serve as the full length of this. So I will start imputing what I have on the waistline after making these vertical lines. So note that this is my center front and this is the center back. So I place my tape here. I'm going to measure my waist circumference divided by 4. And I have nine and a half. I will mark. There is no dart to it, so I'll just add my one and a half inch, which is the seam allowance I added for the upper bodies. On the hip, this is my hip. I'm going to measure my hip circumference divided by four. So divide by four, I have eleven and a half. And I'll go ahead and add one and a half. So that is what I have here. One and a half. So I'll first connect what I have from there. From my waist to the hip. So this is the hip. I'll just use my hip cuff for that connection. Then I'll connect it up to this point. So after that, I'll come over to the to my knee. So I'll measure what I have on the hip to the point of my seam allowance. So from there, okay, sorry about this connection. I was supposed to connect here. Please, sorry about that. So 
I'll place my hip curve on this allowance, seam allowance, and I'll point it towards here. Okay. Sorry about that. So I will for the knee line, I'll just place my tape at the center front and measure everything I have here. So here I have 13 inches. So I'll remove one and half. So 13 inches, I'll count one and half. So on this point, I'll have 11 and half. So I'll carry what I have on that 11 and half on the hip. I'll place it on the hem at 11 and half. So after that is done, from the hem, I'll use a straight ruler and connect to the knee. And from that point, I'll use my, my ruler from the hip right here. I'll place, this is the hip part of the curve. I'll just go ahead and place it this way. Okay, so make sure it touches here to here. Can you see that? And then this is the hip and it goes this way. So that is how to go about it. Now, on this allowance, we have our hip. And then we have our overlap. So the overlap is going to be 2 inches below the knee line. Or it can be, sorry, 2 inches above the knee line. Sorry about that. Overlap is usually 2 inches above knee line. But for this, I will have my overlap on my knee line. I don't want it to open too much. So I'll have it on my knee line. So from this hip line, I will come in on the waistline and contour my waist. So the first thing I'll do is to mark out my zip allowance. One, one inch is my zip allowance till I get to the overlap so this is at the knee line is where i have my overlap so if you want it two inches above no problem you can go ahead and do that so I'll first of all mark out my one inch so this one inch i've marked out i'm going to first cut it Because that is where we will have our zipper before we talk about overlap. So once I get to this point, I will cut it at half an inch. Don't cut because we are going to stitch the overlap. Okay. So this is how your overlap is supposed to uh, look like. So the next thing we are going to do is our zip contour for the center back. So for the center back, I will go in and contour by three quarter three quarter if you remember on the upper bodies we contoured by three quarter so this three quarter i'm contouring here i'll replace it here make sure you replace it here for the back or else you have a shortage there so from this point i'll come in by 0 0.75 that is for the back then i'll reconnect that back to the hip this is only for the back. It does not affect the front. So when I'm cutting, I'll cut the back first. Then i now cut the front. All right. So once that is done, I'll connect the contour, zip contour line. I'll connect it this way to the hip. Or let me just use my straight ruler. Connect it to nothing from that point. Connect it to nothing, to the hip, like this. So once you have connected it to that point, you come back to the overlap point. So on the overlap point, I'll just come in by half an inch. So once I have, I come in by half an inch, I'll connect it like this. Okay? So here, you can see the boot shape here. Can you see that? So I'll just go ahead and cut off what I have here. 
and I'll take it to the point of the overlap. So please don't cut it off. I almost cut off that part. Please just cut it to this point. All right. So we are done with the back and we want to talk about what we have here. So I came in by half an inch. Don't bother to add it up here. Okay, so it's okay. It does not affect anything. So I'll now come here and cut the back. So I'll follow the addition of my back contour line for the back. So after taking away the back, then we'll cut the front. So my seam allowance is here, so don't bother because we've added our seam allowance of one and a half already. Can you see? So that is how the shape of our skirt is. So I'll just quickly lift the center front. This is center front. I place my notch. So on top of this, I'll add my half inch. So seam allowance for up is half an inch. So that is what I'm cutting here, half an inch. Alright, so now after I've achieved that, I will take off the back. So I will take off the back this way. Then we cut the front, okay? Because of the contour line, we will now cut the front into the hip. I believe you understand this. So we are done. So, so this is what we have at the lower part. I added one inch and one and a half. I added half inch, half inch. So now we are going to fuse this to the back together. So I'll take off my pattern and spread open what I have on the fabric, spread open what I have on the lining. So I'll just go ahead and stitch it together. I'm not turning anything. I'll just secure with my pin and stitch them together this way, especially on this part. So I will go, go ahead and stitch like this. You can see how I placed it. I placed it wrong side to wrong side. This is, this is the hair stay. So I will do that. Then we are going to attach the, uh, the upper part now. So let me do that. I'm sewing 0 0.5. So you can see I placed wrong side to wrong side. So and you can see I made notches. So these notches I made is the that position. So to make that notch, just simply fold this by two and make sure you arrange it at the center. Can you see? So place this, this is on fold and then you make your notch. This notch is for this that. So that by the time you open it and you want to sew the upper piece, I'll just go ahead and do what? And first sew. So I'm going to first sew this is going to be for this. So I'm sewing, like I said, leave half an inch. So I'll flip this to this and make sure I match my notch here first. Okay, so I'll secure my notch with my pin. So as I'm sewing now, this is what I'm going to sew. Can you see? So if you have an excess, we'll cut it off. So I'll secure it with my pin. I'll go to my machine now. I'll follow this already existing stitching line. I'll sew it till I get to the end of it. So I've joined them together right now. Can you see? So once you get to the dart, open up the dart this way. So this is only one piece I joined. So after sewing that part, you bring in the other part. So we are going to sew fabric first. Then we'll turn it with our lining. So I will first match here. I will match the dart to the notch. And I will secure with my pin, repeat the same process. So I will also lay this and follow 
the stitching line at the back and stitch this so let me do that on joining this is what you are going to have so the next thing now is to sew the lining so for the lining we'll just flip it this way for each of them we'll just go ahead and do what we'll take it one after the other you can see how i'm doing that so i will sew right here following this stitching line to the end so i will do that when i'm done i'll have it covered this way for this i'll also flip it this way and i'll also stitch so i'm going to do that following this stitching line i'll keep matching it so i'm done sewing and i opened up the uh, the dark lines so the next thing i'll do is to place notch on this cup please make sure you place your notches or else it will be difficult to relax okay so once that is done i've already sewn the other side like i said now that you'll be coupling the back down part with the sea green upper part then i'm going to sew the lower piece that is the skirt piece together with this lining right now so i'm going to couple and give it a good press right right just ironed it down right now so i have my lining right here it's also a short lining so i'll go ahead and start matching right side to right side okay so i'm going to sew first the neckline i'll sew the neckline so i always like to sew my neckline this way so i'll use the lining to cover it up this way so when you are doing this make sure it's matching as it's matching right here before you turn so i stitch on the neckline i'll do that for the other so I'm, I'm done joining the back and the front neckline so the next thing we'll do is to sew the sleeve so for the sleeve i'm going to spread open i'm going to so for the sleeve you need um i have this sleeve i have it on fold so you need a rectangular fabric and the the length is 20 and the width is 12 and a half so that is what you need so here is on fold so i just go over to the machine now i'm going to i'm going to stitch the side okay i'll close up this side turn it to the right side then show you how to sew the sleeve so i'm done closing the side so i'll open it up from here so once i open up from here i will give it a good press okay so i'll just go ahead and iron the sides so after that it's time for us to construct the sleeve so for the sleeve we are going to get the midpoint this is the midpoint i'll just use um, my my chalk this is my the midpoint put it together get the midpoint this is the midpoint i've gotten the midpoint for the down part and the midpoint for the upper part so the width of this sleeve on the upper part is four inches so it's going to come out at four inches so i will mark or we can use four and a half four and a half inches so just mark four and a half inches four and a half inches so the total width of the sleeve will be uh, four and a half inches from midpoint to midpoint so you have nine inches as so after you have gotten 4.5 here we will come back to the folded parts and we are going to measure four inches okay four inches so now this four inches i'm going to pick up the upper four max the folded part four inches from the center front so the next thing we are going to do will come to the open side so i will advise you to weave this part because this this sleeve right now you need to weave the upper piece of it so here i'm going to pick up this 4.5 and this is what i'm going to do i'll make sure this part touches here can you see in a diagonal way so this part has to touch and come out at least by one inch 
and then match up with the midline then i'll bring in this one too i'll bring it also this way from the 4.5 to meet up with what we have right here and then it touches here as well so at this point two of them will kiss each other the two sleeves will kiss each other at the midpoint so at this midpoint i'm going to stitch this part i'm pinning now i'll go ahead and do what and stitch this part so i'll quickly go ahead and stitch on this part so this is what you will have i'll iron it iron it make a crease line to it so let's all right so you can see i've tacked the two sleeves so and i they came out at one one inch and it has to lay on this four inches which i made on the down part of the sleeve so right now i'm done stitching them together so it has to come out from this line at least at one inch as you can see so the next thing we'll do now from this point i stitched i'm going to put it together this way then once i put it together this way i'm going to stitch at 0 0.5 inch only on this line so i'll stitch for you to see so before you embark on the please use your weaving machine and weave this around you can see this part is rough but for tutorial purpose i'll just leave it like this. but make sure you serge or weave around it so it will be neat at the end of the day so i'll go over to the machine now you can see where i'm stitching i'm stitching from this end okay i'll stitch at 0 0.5 let me stitch in so you can see i stitched at 0 0.5 so wherever it terminates before this point i stopped so i'm going to turn it around so once you turn it around definitely you will have that effect you have we have on the sleeve on the video so i'll just arrange it this way can you see so that's how it's going to look like this way so at the end of the day you can see what we have you see, we have the effect so we are going to sew what we have right here i'll open up the seam lines place this on the shoulder line stitch it to the mid armhole this way that is why i asked you not to close the sides of the sleeve kinds of the dress so these are the sides and this is the armhole so i've spread my armhole open so before you also do this you must have searched this you must have weaved it one after the other one after the other don't weave the two together just weave it one one then after weaving the next is to open up the seam and place it at 0 0.5 inch this way so i will go to my machine i'm going to sew to the mid armhole from here i'll sew to the mid armhole so for the mid armhole you are going to take the measurement of what you of what you have so what i have from here i will just take my armhole all around okay so here i have 11 so my mid armhole will be at five or oh, let me say because 11 inches i have here is including the seam allowance i believe you understand so whatever seam allowance you you have added for me i added one and half so i have 11 and a half here so it's at 10 so my mid armhole will be five inches so i'll just go ahead and measure five inches i will mark five inches here i will mark then i'll place this after weaving this i'll place it at the mid armhole and i'm going to top stitch on top of it at 0 0.5 make sure this is done at 0 0.5 so i'll quickly do that and bring it back for you to see i've top stitched to the mid armhole so this is the top stitching to the mid armhole so i'm going to repeat this same process for the other sleeve so once i'm done i'll bring in the the side seam i'm going to join them 
uh, right side that is a uh, fabric to fabric like this and I'm going to sew at 1.5 which is what I marked so for here you can see the way we joined the this part you can see here cannot open easily but that is not a problem so to achieve a perfect inseam finishing just start from the beginning make sure you are sewing at your one and a half or one inch depending on your seam allowance only fabric to fabric so once you get to this joining you will top stitch then once you top stitch you flip the lining this way and continue your stitching at 0 0.5 you top stitch again and continue till you get to the end once you go to the lining you repeat the same process i just showed you so i'm going to finish up the other sleeve close the sides so the zipper i'm sewing an invisible zipper to it give it a good press then bring it back to, for you to see the final outcome so i'm done joining the sides and i've given it a good press okay so now i've also joined my because i want to sew my zipper right now so from the waistline i took the measurements of my from the waist i took the measurement at eight it should be eight seven inches but you can place your zip from the beginning if this is your zip just place it from the beginning of the neckline and terminate it at at least one inch okay so everything will still give you eight inches from the waistline so i'll just loosen a little because i went above the measurement so the most important thing now is i've sewn one inch as i marked at the center back and coming over to the overlap i have to go in and take 0 0.5 so I want to show you how you can finish up this overlap. So to finish up this overlap, simply make a notch this way, diagonally. Can you see? And once you have done that, you open up your... If you open up, so you can lay your overlap anyhow you wish to lay it. So I'll just turn it to the front. So just turn it to the front. And then, if you have turned it to the front like this, then it overlaps, okay? So, I will just go ahead and top stitch on top of where I want it to overlap. So, if you look at the overlap we stitched, just arrange it very, very well and run a top stitch. So, that's what I want to do right now. So, it holds it on the side you want. So finally, I've attached my zipper, as you can see. So you have to make sure everything matches up accordingly. The waistline, the empire waist, and the, it has to also run all the way from here. Can you see that? It has to continue this way. Okay. So coming over to the sleeve, this is what I got for my sleeve. Can you see? So you can go ahead and do what? Get the midpoint and attach it, okay? You can just stitch it this way on the midpoint, okay? So if you want it exactly the way it is right there on the thumbnail, you just go ahead and do what? Hand stitch here. So by the time you hand stitch here, it, lay, it lays the way it is right there on the thumbnail. So thank you very much for coming to this tutorial once again. You can now weave or serge this area, the armhole. You can go ahead and serge. When serging the rest of it, just do it round and that is all. So that is how we come to the end of this tutorial. And I believe this class was helpful to you. If you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe. Turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day. Like this video, share to family and friends, drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well. Thank you once again. See you in the next class.